Greetings, everyone. My name is Lauren Maley, and I am with National American University, also known as NAU. I am joined today by John Brandis, one of our doctoral students at NAU's Henley Putnam School of Strategic Security. John is also a major in the United States Air Force and the chief of the Analysis and Innovation Division at the Standoff Munitions Application Center. He recently wrote and presented a paper titled Integration of Long-Range Multi-Domain Fires. John, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do? Um, so, yes, I'm in the Air Force. Um, I'm a B-52 electronic warfare officer by trade. So currently serving at, working at the Standard Munitions Application Center as one of the division chiefs uh, we call SMAC. Um, Tennessee my organization does is we plan all the cruise missiles for the Air Force and then integrate Air Force cruise missiles. So that's JASM and um, the Miniature Air Launch Decoy MAULD. We integrate those with the Navy's um, Tomahawk, land Tomahawk Land Attack miss Cruise Missile, um, as well as different types of Army long range fires like their um, ATAC, which is their short range ballistic missile, as well as um, space and cyber and other non kinetic electronic warfare type effects. So our goal is to, we try to integrate all those, the different domains of warfighting together that really the, over the long range provided to provide theater level effects to um, the co combatant commanders. So the senior generals in charge of different theaters around the globe. Um, it's kind of what we do in a nutshell, specifically um, with my division, I have um, three branch, well, four branches in my division. Um, I have a, it's called a joint fire element. So I have a group of individuals that are, um, they're represent, um, they're from the Army field artillery backgrounds. I'm a Navy Tomahawk cruise missile background, as well as electronic warfare backgrounds and cyber backgrounds. And they're kind of my lead in our lead integrators with the different services or different domains, components of the Air Force. As well as I have an intelligence branch, so doing intelligence analysis for SMAC. And then I have two model and simulation branches, one at, with us at Parks Air Force Base working the AFSIM model. And then I have another group up at Army Air Force Base working the EATSIM model. So they're basically running simulation of all of our cruise missile planning. So they're essentially telling us how good or not good the plans we build are. So they're, they kind of do a lot of that, um, high level, help us with the high level thinking. So we essentially, as we support our operations and plans folks for the actual, do the actual uh, missile planning. Gotcha. And how, how does what you do relate to the paper that you wrote? So the paper that I wrote was, um, was basically one of the things that my commander's been talking about is, you know, wanting to get something published. So I'm not quite at the, well, I'm ready to, to get myself into publishing um, for this paper, but he wanted something published and wrote now talking about the need for integrating long range fires. So long range fires, we kind of classify as really cruise missiles and um, your short to intermediate range ballistic missiles. Um, not, not the ICBMs or the ones off big long range ones off submarines, not talk about those. Um, but how we integrate those and as well as the different types of non kinetic effects. So, you know, cyber warfare, um, things they're doing through providing space effects as well, or just kind of standard electronic warfare. So jamming enemy radars and communications. So how do we integrate that all together? Kind of wanting that and the class I took in this, um, at the, I guess called the fall quarter start in October was kind of the, the perfect time in open, uh, essentially open-ended. So I took the opportunity to write out a topic that interested my boss. Um, but I was interested in as well as, you know, it's kind of what I do day to day. And really, as we try to build advocacy, for one for my organization, but for really getting the, the, the DOD, the Department of Defense, to really focus on how do we integrate um, long-range fires. And they got some other things going. Really provide that advocacy of why this needs to happen. So it kind of sounds like what you wrote on is truly a hot topic in the military right now. Um, it is. Um, there's some things going on. You've got... Um, it's, it's the name has changed multiple times, but it's going to be from like global integrated fires to global effects coordination. So it's, it's how do we can um, command and control and integrate all the different types of fires, all these new things coming out you know, really across all these domains and domains are you kind of, you know, 
the air domain, the land domain, the maritime domain, space domain, cyber domain, um, electromagnetic spectrum is another domain. So it's how do I how do I take all these different areas of war fighting and how do I integrate them together? And and that's kind of what the the hot topic is right now. Multi domain operations is really kind of the the new buzzword that's coming across the DoD right now. But it's just another of it's new tools that we're adding to our tool chest for war fighting. But and how do we as you think about how we use these new things in relation to you know more traditional ways of war fighting, but also our current command and control structures and how we're organized so how do we get all this stuff jumbled together to be effective for the you know the 21st century Mm -hmm. so your paper it covers what's happening in real life now and that was from one of your classes or kind of uh the topic came from one of your classes at henley putnam do you often in your classes go over real world situations um yes we do often um I would say majority of the classes we're using um, definitely <coughs> using um, current events to to drive certain things. I mean, not everything is historical. Um, we're using um, things, you know, you know, nine eleven's been a hot topic, but the global war on terror, you know, we're still fighting that. So it's it's how do I take what's happened relating to what's happening now? So I mean. Like I said, current events are driving a lot of the discussions and the writings that we're undergoing right now. So I know you're ending kind of towards an, like the end of earning your degree. I know you've got four classes, four exams, and a dissertation left to finish. What was your experience like at Henley Putnam? Um, it's actually been a pretty good experience. I've, I've enjoyed my time. Um, it's the second actually how I say my, my third online degree program. Um, I did a master's online, a grad certificate online, and then now my doctorate online. And it's nice having the flexibility to, to work online. I mean, I'm my current job, I'm, I'm, I'm traveling a lot. So I have the ability to, you know, I don't have to worry about attending classes. So I'm able to travel when I need to travel. Um, there's benefits of being the work from home, schedule the times that work best um, mm-hmm. for my family and I and my work life. So it's able to balance all those out. It's just, and it's nice. And I really, I've been, you know, it's one of these things where, you know, most of my, my undergrad and my master's are all in um, aviation management. So transportation industry, airlines, airports, and how I, you know, how do I manage and lead those or types of organizations. So I've taken more of now my career path from the military and then it's kind of being applied here and, you know, also branching out, you know, learning new things. So definitely getting into all the intelligence and it allows myself to bring that back to what I do day to day. Like right now, I've now found myself leading intelligence personnel. Um, you know, before I've worked a lot with them, but now I understand where they're, where they're coming from, how they do their analysis um, so it's been very beneficial. I get to take a, a different light. My conversations with my intelligence folks have gotten better now because I have more of an understanding of where they're coming from. I mean, not have their exact formal training, but you know, a lot of these courses. I'm like, hey, you know, I, I know I've well I've read your your big books that that's kind of going through what what your training is probably based off of. So it's mm-hmm. I'm, I'm building an understanding, at least a bigger picture, and. Just the ability to study a lot of these, you know, hot topics, you know, I wrote a paper on, you know, when Iran really was heating up and, you know, the president, we were really starting instituting a new uh, max pressure campaign, you know, take a look at, okay, so what is all going on in the history of Iran since the Ayatollahs rose in 1979 with the hostage crisis all through from Carter all the way to President Trump now? you know, and then this current campaign. So I was able to take real world events, look at it historically and they kind of figure out, well, maybe we should continue to do these things or do more of X and less of Y to try to influence Iran to back to the, you know, join the global community or, you know, taking a look at China on their efforts, seeing what they're doing in the South China Sea. I've done that in another class. So it's a lot of real world things that I look at regularly and at the, mm-hmm. through my position. So it's able to 
and be able to bring a different light on these problem sets that I'm seeing between school and real life. That's awesome. And so you've touched on how the Henley Putnam programs have helped your career because you've been able to talk to people in the intelligence industry and understand where they're coming from. Are there any other ways where your class or that your faculty have kind of opened your eyes to how other parts of the industry work? Um, they have, um, you know, coming from a, an operations background, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll hit on the intelligence side. It's, it's, it's under, I think it's building an understanding of where of really the intelligence community, I think is, it's one of the, the biggest things I've gathered from this course is, you know, the, why, what it, why does intelligence do what they do? How do their, their, their ways of thinking, how is their analysis going? So it's understanding that, that back end thinking, um, as well as even on the, you know, dabbling a little bit on the, um, the security side of the house, you know, it's kind of a couple classes on there, but it's, it's just taking a look at, you know, different parts of national security and why these are beneficial, why this is needed, you know, why is executive protection important, important in real as well. You know, these guys are protecting our senior leaders and what they're going through and they're planning them. Well, well, this actually is very similar to how I do my operational planning. So it's, it's kind of under, building an understanding across the, really na the entire national security community, uh, not just from my lens of flying airplanes in the, in the U.S. Air Force. You know, actually, while there's a lot more in this much bigger enterprise that's behind all this stuff that leads me to decisions that I have to make or I'm being told to make in my day-to-day -day job. So what drew you to start classes at Henley Putnam? Um, so I'd say the, the biggest thing with um, Henley Putnam. So um, I did not actually personally discover Henley Putnam. Um, I came across was the um, Air Force Global Strike Command, this, um, working with the Air Force Institute of Technology so um, basically they're coming up with using the civilian institutions program for distance learning and more distance learning opportunities for individuals involved in nuclear enterprise. Um, yes, I'm involved in nuclear enterprise. I fly BP2s, which can carry nuclear weapons. So, you know, heavily involved in that. And, and I saw the email came across and it's like, Hey, we have opportunities for bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and a doctorate degree. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to apply for a doctorate and we'll see what happens. And I was one of the 30 or 35 individuals Global Strike Command chose to be their beta test. And so it was the, the first person that start from scratch. They had a couple other people already enrolled in the program and decided just to pick up and pay for in the command. Mm -hmm. But I'm the, the first one that they're actually sending through for to get a doctor's degree online. So it's, it's just one of those things that, I decided to apply and see what happens and I get accepted and, and here I am today. That's awesome. And uh, now that you're in it, would you recommend that other students uh, enroll at Henley Putnam? I would. I think that the, um, especially as you, as you climb into your academic career, I think it's, you know, your master's and then your doctoral level, you need to specialize in something. I think it's the undergraduate is it's much more time to be much more general. Um, you know, it's my undergrad was, you know, an was in aviation management. Um, but there really wasn't much opportunity to specialize, you know, do you want to specialize in airline management or specialize in airport management or um, aircraft manufacturing and production, you know, going from the airlines or I'm working for Boeing. Um, it was, it was opportunities weren't there. You know, my master's, even my master's, I specialized in the management side, mm -hmm. excuse me, but it, it still wasn't, the specialization wasn't, it wasn't as much as what I was a light. For Henley Putnam, at least at this degree program, for the most part, it's been heavily into the intelligence side of the house, which I've enjoyed. Um, and even if you're looking at counterterrorism or executive protection, it's very much intelligence driven. And that's just something that one is it's nice being very spe being very specific going through. So as I think as I get towards my dissertation, um, which honestly probably won't be intelligence driven. Uh, well, writing on intelligence, but it it's nice to be able to just have highly specialized in something, and as you try to earn that um, work towards that expertise. So it's it's kind of just building that pyramid where you know it's 
I'm learning something very focused in a very small focus area where I can become that absolute expert in, you know, a specific area. Well, thank you so much, John, for joining me and answering all of my questions. I really appreciated getting to talk about your paper and your experience at Henley Putnam School of Strategic Security. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, no, nothing else I'd like to say. Um, I, I, well, I guess I, I do recommend Henley Putnam. I've enjoyed the program. So it's anybody out there, um, I would I highly recommend it. All right, well, thank you everyone for tuning in. If you want to hear more about what our students are up to and to stay up to date with NAU and Henley Putnam, follow us on social media. Thank you everyone and have a great day.